Hello everyone, this is Trevor, and today we're playing, we're playing a little game, we're playing, we're playing a little game I like to call Chivalry Medieval Warfare. And today, you guys get to watch me become a blender. Oh great, this guy's using the weapon that I just... I don't like you much, sir. Wow, this guy is fudging. Oh my god, shish kebab! <laughs> He's doing everything I did wrong. No, he's doing everything that I wish I had did right for my Brandy Stock video. Oh, damn. Well, okay, what was I saying? Um, today I'm going to teach you guys how to use the Claymore. Now, the Claymore. Mother of God, this weapon. Oh, my God. Okay, well, great start. I'm being uh, fought against by someone who knows to how to use the brandy stock much better than me. Ah, uh, but the claymore! <laughs> the claymore, let's go to stats just a little bit. So the claymore, super duper fast. This is like, it may not look like it, but it rivals the speed of some uh, men-at-arms primary weapons. Damage is decent, reach is decent. What are you doing, son? I'm so, so sorry, Limpin. You're not worthy. Thanks for your help. Okay. Uh, so, the damage, very decent. Uh, pretty on the, on the low end compared to other man-at-arms wep uh, vanguard weapons. But its speed and reach more than make up for it. It's so, so... Ah, fuck nuggets. Was I lagging? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, so anyway, the uh, speed and reach, motherfucking beastly when it comes to Vanguard weapons. All the Vanguard weapons, they're kind of all over the place in terms of speed and reach, but this guy, I think this is the highest speed weapon that the uh, Vanguard's got. Equal to the fork only. Come here. And there you go, sir. Now, as you can see, it's still got decent range, right? Not as good range as most other Vanguard weapons, actually. I think it is the shortest, in fact. But compared to other classes' weapons, it is damn long. And extremely fast. This is pretty much the epitome of a speed-range balance. And that is quite evident when you go, um... When you try to use them in tandem. Ah, as you can see, it just, it comes right on the heels of your enemy's strike. So, like, as soon as they strike, you can just rush on in right after their weapon um, hits the ground and get a strike in on them because it's so fast to hit. And it deals a decent amount of damage because it is a primary. Oh, God. Okay, he's using a battle axe. Now, in terms of general strategy with this weapon... Um, you can do quite a few things, but the funnest thing, in my opinion, is to do something called the Blender. You may have heard me mention this before. You've probably seen it in a prior video. But the Blender is a tactic with the Claymore, um, it, it's pretty damn insane. I'm gonna try to show you guys with Limpin, but he's a very, he's a rather skilled player, so I don't know if it'll work on him. Especially against something like the War, the, uh, the Hammer. But, um... Blender is essentially spamming like a motherfucker. As much as humanly possible. And I just boned him with it, okay? Normally, blend people who use blenders are like this. I prefer to take a more intelligent approach and throw in a block or two here or there. Like, if I hadn't blocked that first overhead he, he threw at me, Oh, you fucktard. You fuck mothering fucker. No, you didn't deserve that chance at all. <laughs> okay, but as you, as you saw, blending is so fun, okay? Uh, you can make this one of the funnest weapons in the game just by blending. 
by blending stupidly. My kind of blending is much more intelligent, I like to think. Uh, now, the classes that can deal with this class are uh, thing people that have higher range. Oh! And people that know and, and um, just very skilled players. Because the Claymore is a very novelty weapon, right? It's not objectively better than most other weapons. It's just if people know how to use it good en well enough, they can usually do well. Now against something, someone like uh, Pende Pendega, who is very skilled with his weapon, it's very difficult to do well with it. Oh, fuck buckets. Should have seen that coming. Yeah, you see, it's... It's easily countered by people who know what the hell they're doing, and know how to counter it. And the Claymore is quite easily countered, honestly. Um, its its speed can easily be countered by a quicker weapon, ergo a man-at-arms. Um, and its reach can be countered by all other vanguard weapons, pretty much. And its damage is countered by just about every other primary weapon. So, it's a novelty weapon. Uh, so to speak. However, that does not mean it's not um, competitively viable. I know quite a few, uh, not quite a few, I know a couple uh, Vanguard sh Chivalry players who use this weapon at a competitive level because it's so freaking long and you can combo, wombo, blenderondo. Oh, you bitch. Thank you, sir. Oh, and you can take heads immediately. And the range of the poke is fun. But it's, it's, it is probably one of my favorite uh, Vanguard weapons. However, you, you need a lot of practice with it to be able to use it um, effectively in a very high level setting. And as you can see, even something like the, the quarterstaff can, can outrange it, outspeed it. I barely outranged it that last second there. Uh, I'd really like to fight Pandanga again. Because, although he's extremely good. Um, what's he using? Oh, good. Okay. So, this is a good example of the Claymore fighting a weapon significantly faster than it. Stop it. But, the Claymore outranges just about every other weapon. Also, as you saw, you can just clip enemies a lot of the time. So, um, as I do with every other weapon, I would say for the Claymore, you can rely on both speed and reach to some extent. Since it's something of, a, of an acquired weapon, it's very difficult to get that balance right. Right? So, unless you're like, unless you're able to find the right balance between blending and not blending and, Oh, oh, that was, oh, 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 nice. <laughs> that was an epic duck, bro. I just, just gotta say. You aren't fit to govern. Uh, but at, at any rate. Uh, what did I, oh, fuck, I was, I, was, I was so trying to say something. Yeah, if you can find the proper balance. If you can find the proper balance between speed and range, I keep getting cut off, then you can truly master this weapon, absolutely. <laughs> bitch, 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 ow, okay, almost got me there. Oh, thanks. Um... This is kind of a recurring theme with Vanguard weapons, I suppose. Uh, you just saw me faint there. Fainting with Vanguard weapons is, in my opinion, actually quite important. 
Uh, most classes don't really need to do this, and fainting generally is a good tactic. Uh, usually against lower leveled players, higher leveled players will be able to see right through them most of the time. At least the second and third times. Um. Sorry. I hate archers so much. But yeah, as a vanguard, whenever I play vanguard, I feel like I need to throw in a feint or two here or there. Because... Their weapons are so long, and they normally don't have this kind of speed, even. Um, you bitch. Oh, okay, ow. That's fine, I'll deal with it. Uh, so, I just... Eh. If you guys can, can use Vanguard weapons without fainting, you know, go for it, right? I just, I feel like it, it really supplements um, the range and the lowered speed. Is that chain mail? Or are you wearing a dress? Ah! My things aren't working. <laughs> oh, that should have hit you and you know it. That's okay. I don't complain too much about this shit. Um, as I was saying, what we don't want to do with this weapon, well, I would recommend fainting, um, every once in a while. I mean, everyone should, should know how to faint. Everyone should try fainting, um, if they remember to. Just not super often or it will get you killed. Um, I would recommend, if you love this weapon, to practice with it as much as possible. Because this is one of those weapons where you will not get good at it without practicing so much. The reason why I fucked up a lot um, against Pandega and the other ones, whoever I lost against, is because I don't use this weapon regularly, right? Now, for those of you who want to master this kind of weapon, um, and there are competitive chivalry players, like I said, who use this weapon as their main primary weapon, uh, I'd recommend just practice with it. You will get most of the tactics use that you can use with it intuitively, um, as in you'll just learn them along the way. There aren't many specific tactics with it, other than uh, you can rainbow, you can blend, um, definitely drag. Drag all the time with it, because that is really how you're going to get your kills. And uh, that's about it. It's a, it's a simple weapon, honestly. It's just, it's just, it's uh, easy to use, hard to master, that kind of thing. With most of the, like most of the weapons in this game. Lord Brimshaw, Duke Wellington. Alright, last fight against Lord Brimshaw, Duke Wellington. I'll just try to use some accelerated drags, perhaps. Against men-at-arms especially. Oh. I'm sorry. Never. <laughs> you see? Fangs will just catch him right off guard. Uh, I, I didn't even need to fade that stuff. Okay, but... I think you guys get the idea. This is a, this is a very... Very... Um, practice necessary weapon, I should say. This sounds kind of weird, but... You need to practice with it to really get a hang of, get the hang of it. We are in disagreement here. <laughs> oh, I see what he's doing. Very smart idea. He was kind of strafing around to try to get me to block early, and it worked the first couple times. The third time, I just forgot to block entirely. I don't know why. Uh, let's see if I can't actually kill him this time. Over here, Squire. I need help with my <laughs> Sorry. I've got more health than you. <laughs> Alright, that's that. Um, again, do not try to rely on this thing's... Um, <laughs> reliability, I should say. You can rely on its speed or reach, just to an extent, right? But it's not the most reliable thing, because it doesn't... It's not a panacea. It doesn't work against every class if you put enough uh, effort into it. I'll... I will... I'll concede the competitive chivalry players that use this um, don't use it all the time. They actually swap to their secondaries, n normally a short sword, if they see a man-at-arms, because man-at-arms can usually out-speed out them. Um, and a short sword outspeeds fucking everything except daggers. 
So just keep that in mind when you're using it. Um, short overview, just only rely on the speed and reach to some extent. Don't overextend yourself with the weapon. Uh, I'd say be aggressive most of the time. It's, it's a fast, long weapon, so, you know, you can give yourself some room sometimes, but don't give too much room and keep some distance. Hopefully all that got through. Uh, <laughs> all in all, it's it's a decent weapon. Definitely requires practice to use properly, but it's, it's very fun to blend. Fun to blend. All right, I think that's about it, folks. Uh, if I taught you guys anything today, if... If you enjoyed the video, like, favorite, subscribe. Uh, if you would like to give me any suggestions for future tactics videos, leave it in the comments. Also, leave any questions on this tactic, any other tactics, any question at all. I'll try to answer. And more awesome stuff coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. As always, have a fantastic day, and I shall see you kind people later. To Ripper out.